In the manner that elect our discussion of electric fields ended up with capacitors or the, the structure that is able to store charge as well as the energy stored inside, we're going to conclude our discussion of magnetic fields with a discussion about magnetic energy stored as well as uh, the, the circuit device circuit component that is able to store charge, which is inductance. So we're going to relate magnetic fields to inductors and well as well as arrive at a way to uh, calculate the magnetic energy stored in a particular system. Now the magnetic energy storage is completely analogous to the electric field. So recall that in electric fields, the electric energy stored is one half the volume integral of epsilon e squared, if you do that volume integral. Similarly, the magnetic energy stored, as you might have guessed, is going to be equal to one half uh, the, the entire volume of b dot h dv. That's where we, so remember, we came up with this by doing e dot d. So in this case, we're doing b dot h, or uh, to make it uh, more, more analogous, d dot e and b dot h. Uh, so b is the equivalent of d, h is the analogy is analogous to e in this case. And so uh, if, we, if we then plug in the relationship that uh, b is equal to mu h, we then arrive at our formula for magnetic uh, stored energy, which is one half the volume integral of mu h squared dv. You can also, uh, similarly, you can also write it as the volume integral of, of 1 half uh, b squared, if that's what you have, and then just divide it by mu dv. It's, the, it's basically the same thing. With that dis discussion of energy, let's switch gears and talk about inductors and inductance. Now the basic element of an inductor is a current loop, or just a closed line loop of current. In that case, in this situation, if, since it's a closed line loop, you end up having a non-closed surface area to talk about. And the basic element, the basic formula for the inductance in a system will be equal to the amount of flux going through this surface area divided divided by the current that it took to create that kind of flux. So another way to write this flux would be the magnetic flux density integrated over the surface uh, divided by the current. So again, for a given amount of current that's in this closed loop, uh, it's going to result in a certain amount of, mag it's going to create a magnetic field and that's going to, can be described by a flux density. If you Add, tally up all of the flux density across the area created by that loop, uh, divide up by the amount of current that it took to create that, that relationship is uh, what we have for, is the, describes the inductance of the system. Now, in, in many cases, uh, since one loop doesn't quite get the job done, so we often use uh, stacks of coils or toroids to describe it. So another Quite often, uh, if you have an inductor, it would consist of, you know, lots of, lots of different loops stacked together, and so you would have the total amount of surface area that that um, you have would actually be all of these added together, right? So if this was just a surface area uh, ds, you would actually have this multiplier depending on uh, how many links you have. If it turns out that you have n loops. Can call it. You end up having n links, uh, each of them contributing to that amount of surface area. So if you end up being in a situation where uh, you have a bunch of loops uh, stacked together like that, you can calculate the inductance as being n times phi divided by the total amount of current. And one uh, quantity that is worth noting is that this n phi 
is often referred to as the flux linkage. And once you have the inductance, you can also come up with the total amount of energy stored, which can be expressed as 1 half Li squared, which we learned from circuit theory. Uh, but quite often, uh, if you already had calculated this, uh, that would be another path for you to find inductance is by using this formula. So another way that you might have to find inductance once you've calculated the total amount of magnetic energy stored is simply uh, rearranging this equation to get 2WH divided by I squared. So that is another way that you can use to get the inductance. Uh, there, there are a few topics that we won't dive into as deep here. But in the meantime, I uh, just wanted to, first of all, give you the expression for magnetic energy, which is completely analog analogous to the electric field related energy storage equation. Uh, and in the simplest case where the way that I often remember it is it's mu H squared over the volume integral divided by two. And then we also uh, talked about the inductance, which uh, is the ratio between the total amount of flux uh, that's going through a current that's generated by a current loop uh, divided by the amount of current it took to create that. So this is somewhat analogous to the capacitance where you have a total amount of char charge stored, but it took you a certain amount of voltage or potential to achieve that. And the ratio between the two of the is the capacitance. So similar to here, uh, the total amount of magnetic flux created uh, divided by the amount of current that it took to create that gives you the inductance. In the case of inductors, quite often we have multiple current loops stacked together. So you have a multiplier n, where n phi we refer to as a flux linkage. But in that case, the inductance of the system would be n phi divided by i. And uh, we, we can also, if we have the magnetic energy stored, that another way to come up with inductance is to use our expression here of 1 half Li squared as another way to find the inductance of the system. And so with that, that concludes our discussion of, of magnetostatics. And then uh, in the next chapter, we're going to look at what happens when, uh, the, when the situation varies with time. And that will provide the remaining missing links for us to tie the electric and magnetic fields together into the set of equations known as Maxwell's equations.